large part of the reason we have so much talk about Israel committing genocide in Gaza is that we have a vast increase in the number of experts in genocide and to increase their own power, prestige, income, and the number of jobs available to them, they are strongly incentivized to denote uh, you know, current ongoing genocides, right? They are incentivized to create genocides where otherwise people might not see them. So too, we have a vast increase in the number of experts in the fields of international humanitarian law and human rights. And so by playing up the horrible things happening in Gaza, people in the fields of uh, human rights and international humanitarian law, right, they get to make the case that their expertise is important, that they are important, they are deserving of funding, they are deserving of jobs to have endowed professorships, that they deserve to be published in the New York Times and the Financial Times, they deserve to be invited on CNN, just as people in the fields of mental health, right, they're, they're strongly incentivized to increase the definitions of mental illness so that more and more of the population needs their services. That will drive up the number of jobs available to psychiatrists and social workers, it will drive up their prestige and their income and their sense of themselves as possessing uh, special skills that enable them to heal society. If you are a specialist in trauma, right, you're incentivized to see the world through the perspective of trauma. So almost all human ills have been related to a cause of trauma. That, that's become the, the dominant paradigm. And so you're strongly incentivized to describe what, what's happening in the world as a result of trauma, that the world has this illness and you have the cure. So this will create more prestige for you, more demand for your services, more jobs for you, more income for you. You're more likely to get published and uh, you're more likely to be part of the cool crowd if you can convince the world that uh, trauma is the magic key to what's going on around us. Ronnie Goldman, in his work in progress, conservative claims of cultural oppression. Feminist narrative tells us that women's liberation is a struggle against the forces of patriarchy. But for conservatives, this is history is written by the victors. And it's a history that silences the voices of the losers, right? The non-feminist women's women whose trials and tribulations never enter the liberal moral equation. So yeah, feminism is a struggle, not by all women against male patriarchs, but really by an elite minority of powerful women against a majority of women who never felt compromised in the first place by traditional gender roles. So liberals adopt their moral stances, like all groups, in furtherance of a heroic narrative that places them at center stage and conscripts other groups as props. So whatever you hear a system, Orthodox Jew, uh, Sunni Muslim, Seventh-day Adventist, uh, gay activist, right? Everybody adopts a moral stance in further of a particular heroic narrative that places you at the center of the universe and conscripts other groups as props. So liberals seek to uplift the downtrodden, but the downtrodden are props. Helping the downtrodden is part of the liberal heroic narrative that assigns them, liberals, a privileged role which other people must bear the cost, right? Uh, just as Clarence Thomas had to bear the cost, that's why he received so much opprobrium, right? If he would have simply accepted his designated role as a victim, he could have enjoyed the beneficence of the liberal establishment, the beneficence of the anointed, and played his role in the victim villain rescuer narrative, as long as he acknowledged that narrative and the anointed status within it as rescuous. But by opposing affirmative action, Clarence Thomas denied that narrative and he denied the status of victim. And so he became exposed to the prejudice from which liberal blacks are uh, shielded. So Robert Bork similarly went through these trials and tribulations of denying the liberal hero system he notes that Supreme Court pronouncements are significantly guided not by the meaning of the Constitution, but by the values of the class that is dominant in their culture. And our primary institutions have been colonized by a parochial morality of an arrogant intellectual class. And this liberal left class elevates their particular cultural ethos into a hegemonic narrative about the meaning of American ideals, all under the guise of thoughtfulness, enlightenment, and progress.